WiseCam Pan V3 is unlike any pan cam you've ever seen before. Its unique two-box design makes it stand out in the security camera market. The dual-box design gives the camera a distinct look with its advanced features and functionality, the WiseCam Pan version 3 is more than just a pretty face. It's a great solution for keeping an eye on your home and loved ones that won't break the bank. Hello, I'm Wander 001 and this is my review of the WiseCam Pan version 3. You can see there is a radical shift in the design language for Wise's panning cameras. I've tested both the version 1 and version 2 up there in the corner and this has both some good and bad features that I'm gonna let you know about. Taking a quick look around the box only because I want to show you this one specific thing right here, which is the IP65 weather rating. Notice that it has a, the two asterisks, which means that uh, in order to get the weather resistance, you do have to buy a power adapter for it, which is sold separately. So I'm not sure how I feel about that caveat with this, but that's not to say, depending on your electrical box and how it is outside, could make this weather resistant. Before we actually take a look at the camera, I wanna talk about some of the things you get in the box with the camera. And as you might suspect, there is mounting paraphernalia. So here we have two screws and two anchors and then a pin. And then this, if you've looked at any other wise cameras before, is a vastly different look and feel to a mounting solution from Wise, and that's because of the unique shape and ability of the Wise Cam Pan version three. Now, the thicker screw right there goes right there, and then you have your two mounting screws that would go there. Uh, this is the one thing that I'm going to ding Wise with, even in the installation instructions. They kind of have somebody marking that with a pen. I've gotten really used to installation stickers uh, from other manufacturers. Just saying, Wise. I know you're trying to save money. The other thing you get in the box is the proprietary six foot flat. USB to micro L-shaped adapter. And this plug is part of the reason that the camera is waterproof, but also proprietary. I have mixed feelings about this as well, but I will admit that this did take away one of the major complaints that I had about previous WiseCam pans. So with that being said, let's take a look at the version three WiseCam pan. Pretty much looks like two Wise cameras stacked on top of each other, attached by a arm. And that arm has some pretty cool features that it helps this WiseCam do that others have not, including other brands, but we're gonna touch on that a little later. Camera from top to bottom is 4.8 inches high, has a width of 2.3 and a depth of 2.4. Taking a look at the business end of the camera, this is going to be your recording area. At the top, you've got your LED status light. Moving down, the camera has four IR lights. And then here we have our image sensor. It has eight times digital zoom. The frames per second that you can expect out of it are 20 FPS during the daytime and 15 FPS at night with a maximum resolution of 1920 by 1080. Notice that that is only HD and not 2K like you might have seen in the pro camera. The view range is 360 horizontal, as you might imagine, because it can rotate, and then 180 degrees vertical. The camera head here can actuate where it points all the way up, or depending on how you, how you have this mounted, straight down. But it also means that it can rotate all the way down. This is the new privacy mode for the Wise Pan Cam ver version three. And I appreciate the fact that Wise has finally caught up to the fact that other manufacturers, when they say that their camera's in privacy mode, you don't have to believe a little LED on the front of the camera, the lens itself rotates all the way down. And I greatly appreciate that they finally caught on with that. Now, if we rotate this back up, you're gonna see two things on the bottom here. We have our setup button that is rubberized, and then we have our SD card or our micro SD card slot right there. You can see that there is a nice bit of weather stripping on that. So if you are going to utilize this outside, you don't have to worry about water getting in there. Coming across to the side here, this is our kind of attaching arm and really, it doesn't do anything. It just holds the motor and cameras in place. If we come over to the other side, there's nothing to look at. 
Coming to the back, you'll notice that there is a speaker on the lower half. So this is where all the power is going to come from. This is just handling all the camera components. But your speaker's down here so that you get two-way audio with this. And then if we come down to the bottom, here is our rotating foot pad. And this is one thing that I greatly appreciate Wise has changed. Notice that there's this channel and then a deep recessed foot pad. One of the complaints that I had with the previous versions of the pan camera from Wise was that they expected you to plug in a micro USB cable into this thing that moved. It was a pain. Well, now you don't have to do that. You just seat it in here, give it a nice push. The foot itself is rubberized and does have a nice threaded screw mount right there. Coming to the back one more time, the speaker is also for the built-in siren that you can use to alert anybody who might be around that shouldn't be. If we rotate our camera down, I wanna talk about the SD card slot for one second because WISE now supports up to a 256 gigabyte micro SD card in their camera. This has been one of the things that WISE has gotten kind of knocked on in that they advertise local storage, but the size of the SD card that you could have with the camera did not really lend itself well to storing all of that local data. As you might imagine, because this is a smart camera, that means that there is a setup process for it. So let's take a look at the setup process for the Wise Campan version 3. This is setup of the Wise Campan version 3. You'll obviously need your Wise Campan and then you will need a WISE account and the WISE app on your phone. Once you open it up, you come to the upper left-hand corner here, select the plus sign, and then you're going to add a device. We are going to look for what we're adding. We're gonna add a camera, or you can search for it if you're not sure. Selecting camera brings up all the cameras that WISE has, and then we're just gonna find the Pan version three right here. Next, you're going to plug in and power your camera. So have your proprietary plug all set, come over to our camera and seat it into the deep channel there. It is going to be kind of an L shape, so you can't really screw it up, but it, it does take a bit to get that in there correctly. I found tilting it forward a little bit and then pushing in. And right there, we can see it has the red light and it is blinking and it's moving. So you're gonna notice the base station's also moving there. So definitely be easier if I had this down Red light should be flashing. We're gonna bring that over there. Yes, the red light is flashing. We're gonna select next. And now it wants us to select a network. So we are going to select the one that Wise already knows, bring that over. And now we're going to press the setup button right here on the bottom of the top. Ready to connect. All right, so I did hear ready to connect. And now there's a QR code that needs to be, to, to be scanned. So we're gonna QR code scanned, please wait. All right, so the QR code has been scanned. I'm gonna select next and bring that over and it's going to try and connect. All right. Setup completed. So setup completed, you give it a name and here we can get access to video. So this is, hey, do you want to get a Cam Plus subscription? You can apply right now and get it or you can say, no thanks, this does not look like it's the uh, free sample, so we're gonna say, no thanks at this time. Uh, we can share the device, do maybe later. Uh, you can continue with the mounting guide, so we'll say begin. It's gonna show you, hey, this is the stuff that you need. Shows you proper placement for mounting. Uh, notice that it does not have a mounting sticker, it expects you to uh, mark it with a pencil. And drill holes, attaching the brackets, how to mount it plugging it into power, tightening things down. And now there is a firmware upgrade, but we can see that's good to go. So after the firmware, that will complete the setup process for the Wise Campan version three. Coming back to our hardware, I did mention that it is IP65 weather rated as long as you get that plug. The plug down here, is weatherproof. It is the other side of the cable that makes it not weatherproof. Unless you have a secure housing for your actual exterior outlets. That's more on you than the camera itself. If you're worried about that, you can purchase the weatherproof cable, again, sold separately. Coming back up to our lens, just like every Wise camera that has come out since the version three, Wise has their proprietary starlight sensor, which allows you to see colored 
in very low light situations before it goes over to, to infrared mode, which is great if you like to see those color images. The camera itself operates on 2.4 gigahertz. No, this is not a five gigahertz camera, but 2.4 gigahertz gives you plenty of speed for a 1080 camera and gives you longer distances than you would with a five gigahertz connection. The camera, as with all WISE cameras, is compatible with Alexa and Google Assistant. If you happen to have their video devices, you can pull up your feed from this camera, write to those, and see what's going on in real time. But speaking of video feeds and some of the things that you can do with this, really, a lot of what makes a smart camera smart is the application that comes with it. So let's take a look at the app for the WISE Cam Pan version 3. This is the WISE application for the WISE Cam Pan version 3. Here I have it up top. You see that right next to it there is an on off switch so you can turn the camera on and off right from here turning it into that privacy mode. If we select our camera that will bring us into the actual camera itself. So right now this is a live feed of my living room. We can see there's a cat right there. If I double tap on the screen it's going to zoom in and there we can see there's our cat just hanging out in the sun. Notice if I try to pinch to zoom it does not go in any further. I can back this out, but the double tap brings it to its maximum zoom point, and if I double tap again, it will pull that back out. I can tap once on the screen, and then right here I have the brackets right up here. If I tap on that, that will actually put it into full screen mode on my phone without having to do a double tap. And if I come over here, notice right there it says HD. If I select that, it will allow me to choose HD, standard def, or 360 and cancel if I don't want any of those or if I don't want to change anything. So if you do have something where you need to kind of restrict the amount of data that the camera uses, that's how you'd be able to do it. Notice also that I have a microphone and a audio cue right there. If I select that, well, now I will hear audio from the camera. I have that off right now, but I can also turn on the microphone simply by selecting that. And now my cat might think he hears me and might come over because he thinks he's going to get treats, but it does not appear that he's going to move, which is fine. But you'll notice that the audio also turned on. So we're gonna turn off our microphone again, which then turns off our audio. So that's everything we can do kind of in this upper portion here. Now, some of the WISE application has radically changed for their cameras. You'll notice now that there's this strip along the bottom of our video feed right there, and that's kind of replacing some of their older layouts. Right here, the first item is our SD card. If you have an SD card in your camera, you can select that, and then it'll bring up a feed for your SD card. Now, this I kind of have mixed feelings about because here we can see this green bar represents everything that the SD card has recorded. And if I come down this far, you'll notice, well, there's nothing there anymore because I had my camera off. So there's nothing for the SD card to do. But notice it says six events. And right now it's tracking the cat from the recording. So it's following the cat around. But as I scroll through this, you notice that it says, five events, six events, six events, nine events. It's not bringing you directly to where those events are. So if I come up to the nine events, Notice there's nothing happening. There's a cat in the corner there, but there's nothing in this visual timetable here letting you know, hey, this is where a person was spotted. This is where a pet was spotted. There are other cameras out there that do this a little better, but if we tap left or right, we can progress through a calendar or we could simply select our calendar and then we can specify the day that we want to go back to. So if I click on that, it'll bring me back to that day. Notice there's nothing happening on that day. So I'm going to bring this back to today. That's gonna to bring us right back, there we go. From here, I can take a photo, which is a still shot of whatever's happening from the SD card. I can select record, which will record video of what happened from the SD card. And I can select album, which will bring me to where all of those videos and photos are saved. So if I select on that, here we've got a bunch of videos. If I had photos, that's where I would access them. If I come over to my videos, I can simply, I can tap on one to see it. And we're just gonna pause that. From here, I can turn the sound on and off. I can select to share this, or I can select delete. We are going to select back and go back to our albums area. If I want to edit something, I could put little tick marks like that, and then I can choose to share or delete what I have saved, or I can select all if I wanted to. We are gonna come back to our SD card view, and I'm going to select go back to live view. 
what that will do is take me back to the actual live view of the camera as it is right now. Similar to what we had in the SD card view, we can take a photo, which is a still photo of what it sees right now. We can record video right from what it sees. We also have the ability to turn on privacy mode. So right now, privacy mode is off because the camera is actively looking through. However, if I select privacy mode, what that does is that turns the camera, faces it down, so you know it can't record anything, and you'll see this icon right there, privacy mode. I can tap either here or in the bar here, and it will turn off privacy mode. So the camera will rotate itself back up and put itself back into the position that you had it in. So right there, that's the center position that I had. Moving on, we have our siren. Siren will sound an alarm using the camera. Sounds something like this. If somebody's around, you let them know, hey, maybe I don't want you around, and that'll kind of deter them a little bit. Here we have track motion. If I turn this on, what will happen is the camera, as it picks up motion, will follow the target around. So you saw that with the cat when I was going through the SD card, the camera was following it. If we do time-lapse, this will allow you to set up a time-lapse video using your Wisecam Pan version three. So you set a start date and end date and the interval in which it will take those still images and then stitch together a time-lapse video. It's a cool feature that Wise had that I haven't really seen in a lot of other cameras. Here we have Pan Scan. What Pan Scan will allow you to do is set up, and I have them right here, four points where the camera will change every 10 seconds to those points. So if you don't have something like I have, which is a really long room, you can set left, right, left, right, and it will move amongst those points. Now, if I turn that on, it will do it every 10 seconds. Notice you can have both the pan scan and the track motion on at the same time. The one thing I like about Wise's interpretation of this for the version three is that not only can you select your left, right, but you can also pick your horizontal. So I actually have one of these where it aims down further so I can see if the cats are in front of where this camera is because this is generally where I give them treats from. Now, if you don't have any pan scans or you set up, you won't have these waypoints. You'll simply select this icon right here, which is a pencil. And what that will do is you'll have a bunch of empty boxes. You would select the plus sign in the box and just set your point. So you can, you can do this, like I said, you can do up, down, left, right, and then you select set. That will change the image and you'll know it's set. If you want to, you can also change one that you already have pre-existing. You simply select on it, readjust your camera, and then select set again. And then when everything is said and done, hit save. Always remember to hit save. But if you wanted to see how your selections will look before you hit that save button. There is a preview button right here and it will gray out the screen letting you know it's going through the preview motion, but you can see it as it progresses through everything. I'm going to exit preview and select back. Notice once I've done that, it turns off track motion and pan scan. I kind of don't like that, but other cameras do that as well. One of the fun things with the waypoint is if you have this, the pan scan set up for waypoints, but you hypothetically, and there it's returning to its true point, hypothetically don't wanna have it scanning all the time, but you wanna have quick points that you can get to. So if I want to, there, I select that, that's one point. Select that, that's another point that I have. What about that one? Well, there's another point. You can have those set up so that you can quickly get to specific areas in your room if you wanted to. Album we discussed a little before, that's where your videos and photos go. We're gonna select back and we're gonna come down to here. So underneath our waypoints, again, if you don't have any waypoints, that will be blank, is our camera control option. So as you saw, we've got up, down, left and right, and you'll notice it is pretty responsive. Now, one thing that I can do is I can just hold this just drag this around and I can point it all the way up at the ceiling. And there, it lets you know you have reached the end point. You cannot do anything else. So I like the fact that it has that and then I could quickly just bring it back down because not knowing if you've reached the maximum length that the camera can do, kind of annoying. So I appreciate the fact that that's there. Notice we have event recordings. If I swipe this up on any other wise camera that has this new layout, you wouldn't have to swipe up because the camera controls wouldn't be there. But if I swipe up, this lets us know, hey, here's everything that's been going on. So right here we could see the little hand icon. That means that there was motion and that that was a person. So if I load that event up, there we could see, this is me running one of my tests. 
If I come over, hey, here's a pet one. So this is the pet kind of checking things out after he came back from the vet, so he is still a little skittish. If I come over to the filters, you can tell it what do I want to see. So I could say motion, sound, person, package, pet, vehicle. And notice that the camera is still going through the recording in the background. What I have set up here does utilize the Cam Plus subscription. If you don't have Cam Plus, but you do have an SD card, what you will see is a still frame image there. And if you tap on it, it will just be that, an image letting you know at this time something happened. And then you'll have to go back to the SD card area in order to see that particular instance. I'm not sure how I feel about that, uh, especially since I have an SD card in here. If I'm not paying for the subscription, why not just give me that 12 second clip from the SD card? In our recordings area, we can download something that we have selected. We can share this or we can delete this. We can also go right back to live right from here. Notice that we have a date right here. If we want a different date, notice if I tap on this, it just collapses it. But here we could see there's something that happened on February 3rd. I can collapse that as well. If I select all events, that brings me to the wise events area, which is different than just for this camera because that will bring in all of the cameras if you have multiple wise cameras. That is everything that the camera control section has for the wise app. If we come up to the sprocket icon right here, this is the settings options for our wise campaign version three. Notice right here, if you ever wonder if you're using your subscription, that lets me know that I'm using the wise cam subscription. But selecting our sprocket icon in the upper right hand corner brings us into our settings. Right at the top here, we have the ability to change the name. So I just have it labeled as such. If I select that, here we go, we can change the name. It gives you a couple of options depending on if you just wanna use a preset. Coming down, we have our detection settings. This will allow you to select motion sensitivity from a low to high. I have it just above what they you know, ship with, which is about a 50%. We have detection zones. Now I keep this off when I have the camera inside, but if we turn on our motion zones, this will bring up a grid of whatever the camera's looking at. And you can touch portions of the grid to tell it, hey, I only care about these sections. Now, part of the reason that I have this off is because with a pan tilt camera, it's constantly going to be moving. So if you have this in a space where you only really care about this bottom half right here, so let's say that's where my cats would be, and I know that even when the camera's panning, up here, I'm not gonna worry about, I can select that. Notice that we do have our camera controls here, so we can move our camera around to see where those zones will be, in other locations if we're going to be panning. We can undo or clear anything that we've set up, and then once we're done, we can select save. Motion tagging is the green box that you see around something that's moving. This is one of the things that WISE does very well, and I like the fact that they have this. Whether it's a pet person or motion, that green box will let you know, this is what triggered me, pay attention to this. And here we have our sound sensitivity. I really don't use the sound triggering options. Selecting back, we have our event recordings. So right now I have record motion events. I have off all motion events because I'm using the smart detection events, which you need the Cam Plus subscription for. And under this, we have record sound events. Notice I have that turned off as I mentioned. Our smart detection is tied into our smart events. So if I select this, it will allow me to choose what kind of events. Well, right now I have person and pet detected. I could have friendly faces, vehicles, and packages. Friendly faces, you need a higher tier of Cam Plus, just an FYI. And then we have our audio noises. So we have crying, meowing, barking, or talking. These are in beta right now, but kind of nice that they're there because guess what? Maybe there's talking in a room where there shouldn't be talking and the camera will start recording. Likewise, meowing, my cats don't really meow. So if they're meowing, something's clearly wrong. So I wanna have a notification sent to me when that happens. We come to our notifications. Notice there's a plus next to that. That's letting you know that I have the Cam Plus subscription. Right now, I have no notifications turned on because I was testing this and don't want a bunch of notifications sent to my phone. If I turn this on, I have the ability to select detects wise events, which we had on that other page, so person, pet, vehicle, etc., any motion or sounds. So if you have the Cam Plus subscription, you're definitely going to want to specify what you get set notifications about. Because if you don't care if your pet's wandering around, but you do care if there's a person, then you're gonna turn on the person option right there. We have alarm settings. These are for smoke and CO2. If you have a smoke or CO2 alarm, that is the standard T3 or T T4 sound, 
you can have your camera act as a pseudo way of getting an alert if your smoke detector goes off. Instead of having to purchase a smart smoke detector, you can use your camera. And what I mean by the T3 or T4, most smoke detectors and CO detectors in the United States kind of now have that as default. So this is an interesting way that you can have your camera act as a more than just a security device. Coming down, we have advanced settings. So right in here, this is where we're gonna access some of our micro SD card options. So first, you have to put a micro SD card in, and then you can toggle this on and off. Right now, I have it set for continuous, but we can change that and select events only. So those triggers are the only things that would be recorded to the micro SD card. We have manage SD card. So right now you can see how much has been used. If I format it, it erases everything on the card. And then we have eject the SD card. We also have right here, motion controls. This will allow you to change the rotation speed of the camera. So when I tap that button, how quickly does it move left to right? Again, I have it right in the middle right now. But if we select pan scan, this is another area where you can set up those waypoints that we talked about before. And I'm gonna select back. And then you can reset position, meaning it will spin around and set itself to zero point before you actually set up any other points. So if you ever need to know where the center of the camera is, if you've been spinning it around, simply hit that reset and the camera will set to zero and then you can place it where you'd like. Moving on, we have our night vision. So you have auto on and off. So auto means as it gets dark, it will turn those on. But notice we have night vision conditions. So right here, it says dusk. So when it gets low light, it will turn on the night vision. However, maybe I want complete darkness. So the camera does have a starlight sensor in it. So that means that it can take advantage of ambient light at night and still be able to see. So I want complete darkness before that will kick on. We also have the ability to turn on and off IR lights. So if I turn that on, those IR lights will now help me at night see what's going on. If you have the camera looking out a glass window, probably don't wanna have those on because that'll reflect back at the camera. We have camera status light. This will turn on and off the red blue LED that's on the front of the camera. Not as important with the pan cam version three because when it's in privacy mode, it turns itself all the way down so you can't see anything. But it's nice that it's there. Rotate image 180 degrees. Well, if you mount your camera upside down, you're gonna to wanna to change the image so that it's right side up. That's how you do it with this right here. You have show timestamp, show wise logo. These two are the images that you saw on my screen when I was showing you before, the wise logo on the left and then actual time and date. I like having both of those because well, if I have multiple cameras and they're not all wise cameras, I like to know where recordings are coming from. If you don't want those, simply toggle them off right there. Record sound, in some states in the US, you cannot actually record sound and video, so you can toggle that off right from there. And then time sync, if you wanted to sync with your cell phone's time, simply select the sync button right there. Next we have rules. Rules will allow you to set up specifics where the camera only records during specific parts of the day, or maybe when a wise plug is turned on, the camera then starts recording. That's all done through our rules. Sharing, sharing the device, well, you can share this with other people. However, they will need to have their own WISE account in order to do so. You simply select the button there and type in their email address. Coming back, you've got device info, sensitive information in there, MAC address, serial number, but this is also where you access the firmware for your device if you need to update it. And then we have WISE support. So. Built-in support for your camera, right in the WISE app. Always appreciate when a manufacturer does that. You have restart device, meaning it will turn itself on and off, and then you can del delete your device right from here. We are going to select back to come to our WISE Cam Pan camera controls, and I'm gonna select back one more time to quickly go over these icons down here if this is your first WISE camera. So right now you're on your home, that's gonna list out all of your cameras. You have events, this is going to pull in all of your events from all cameras. Now right now I have it filtering for person, but if I turn that off, now anything that comes in. I can select motion, I can come in here, I can select which camera I want. I can also select dates. We have our monitoring. If you have opted to pay for uh, WISE monitoring, this is where you'd be able to access that. I do not, so I have nothing here. We have our shop. Well, if you need to know where to buy your WISE products from, you can do so right from here. One of the benefits of the membership is that you can get some things on a discount. So that's what the shopping tab is. And the accounts page, well, that's gonna show you a lot of account-related stuff. 
Cam Plus, it's letting you know, hey, I'm worth paying for, here's all the things that I've done. Uh, if you had Cam Protect, and then if you had Home Monitoring Account, that's going to be your overall account information. Likewise, Home, if you had multiple homes, that's where you'd go. Services, security, sharing, notifications. Again, this is across your account, so this will affect all of your cameras. Firmware is always nice because you can update your firmware for all devices in one location, so I always like to come in here. So notice there's an update that I need to do for my V2 that's in my garage. Uh, smart integration rules, etc. This is all here. Uh, there is a sign out button. That has been everything that you can do for the Wise Cam Pan version three utilizing the Wise application. As you saw, there's a lot that you can do with the Wise Campan version three in the Wise app. One of the things that I always concern myself with is actual power usage of a device rather than just stated from the company. And I have found while idling, the Pan Cam version three uses 1.7 watts of power. When the IR is on and it's in night vision mode, you use 3.8 watts of power, which is a bit more than the version two. When moving or rotating the camera, left to right, up and down, that will spike the actual power usage to between 5.4 and 5 watts of power. Now, unless you're constantly having this move or you're using those staged areas for movement, you're not gonna see that really add up and the idle and even the IR is well within reasonable expectations for a budget camera like this. Now, I know I've been talking about the features and I showed you what the application can make the camera do. Obviously, you wanna see what the actual video from this looks like. So let's take a look at that now. Thank you.
One of the things that I really appreciate about the CamPan version 3 here is the fact that of all the pan tilt cameras that I've tested, this now has the lowest field of range where I can aim this so far down that I can see my cats hanging out in places that I have never seen before. And I've tested quite a few that had deeper channels that allowed this to look further down. I will also say that if you actually mount this and have it like this, you can see exactly what's underneath it as well. So that is something that no pan camera has ever been able to do before. Now you might have noticed that while the camera is moving, that it does get a little pixelated. And that was common with the version one and two as well. So it's not really a knock on wise, but just if you're gonna be moving the camera until it stops, you are going to see that pixelation. Now, aside from video, you obviously wanna know what the audio quality from this sounds like. Let's take a listen to that now. Audio test, wise cam pan, version three. Sally sells seashells by the seashore. Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. Test one, test two, test three. And test. Motor sound test. This will be an audio recording test. Roughly five feet away, not going to raise my voice. There you heard. Audio from the device itself is pretty clear and loud. However, in reverse, not so much. And part of that depends on where the microphone is facing. If I have this face down like this, the microphone is not facing my speaker, so it'll be more difficult for that to pick up audio. Realistically, once you get to about 15, 20 feet away, you're not really gonna hear anything from this, and that's kind of problematic.
You might have also noticed that when the camera was rotating, when it rotates left to right, you don't really hear a motor noise. But when it goes up and down, you did hear a motor noise. And that is because the microphone on the camera is closer to that movement zone. But that's not to say that the motors themselves are extraordinarily loud in any way, shape or form. So I have actually updated the firmware of this camera and had it spin around and turn itself on. And my wife, did not notice it until I let her know that I was updating the firmware. So that's a testament to just how quiet it is. Now I know I've been talking a lot about the hardware, the software, all the really good things that this camera has, but that's not to say that it's not without its fault. There have been some changes that WISE has chosen to make with something like this that some could see as a deterrent. First being the base. It's no longer magnetic. That's why you have that plate right here to mount it. So that's gonna limit some of your mounting options. The rotation image having blurriness makes it a little less useful when tracking a target. It also does not pan up to the face as well as it should even had previous wise campaigns that did it better where it would adjust the camera to look up at somebody who was walking by. This camera tended to stay at ground level. Speaking of the camera, once you get to about 30 feet away, whether it's night or day, the camera does lose track of you. In fact, about 25 feet away at night, the camera will lose track of you altogether. So you might end up with scenarios where the camera is no longer following a target. As you saw when I came around the corner, it lost track of me twice and then had to pick me up again. Moving the camera, if in privacy mode, meaning I unplug it and then plug it in somewhere else, takes the camera out of privacy mode and spins around and the lens ends up looking like that. However, when you go into the app, the app says it's still in privacy mode. So I kind of hope that in a future firmware update, if I power down the device by unplugging it and it's in privacy mode, that when I plug it in again, it stays in privacy mode after it does its initial spin check. The last and could be the biggest downfall of the Pan Cam version three here, it is not compatible with Cam Plus Lite which is the name your own price for person detection and 12 second cloud storage. I do understand that going forward, WISE will no longer be allowing newer cameras to utilize that service. And again, I understand the necessity keeping the back end up, but if you have to factor in a monthly subscription, albeit one of the cheapest that is out there, that is still an extra cost that you need to determine for the camera. Because yes, you can use it, for local storage. But when you don't have a Cam Plus subscription, when you get a notification, you get just a still frame. You go in, you look at it, and you say, okay, about this time, this action happened. Then you have to go back to the SD card and scrub through it. That new SD card layout for the timeline, I don't really care for. In fact, there are other manufacturers that do it better having colorized sections of that timeline, letting you know, hey, this is where we saw a person or a pet. And that's why I put the fact that you need the Cam Plus subscription as a negative. If they're trying to sell you on the local storage, I wish they would make it a little better in usage so that I could say, yes, 100%, if you don't have Cam Plus, this is a solid buy. But because that really bad scrubbing, it's, it's a little harder to say that. That is not to say that this is not a great camera. For the price, even with Cam Plus, this is a solid pan tail camera. In fact, like I said, the motion of the camera lens here lets you see things that you never thought you could see with a pan tilt camera before. That's why even with those caveats, I still strongly recommend the Wise Cam Pan version three if you're looking for a pan tilt camera. With that being said, I have been Wanderer 001. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the area below. And as always, thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, consider giving it a like as that will help other people find the video as well. If you like what I'm doing here, you can always help fuel the next review by buying me a coffee, link in the description below. Last but not least, if you want to be notified when I upload a new video, you know what to do.